This is the second in a series about how we as individuals can build back better and create the lives that we've always wanted. The pandemic has brought us so many options to think about and so many things to reflect on in our own lives. And this video will show you how one specific thing could really pay dividends in your life. And in this video, I'm gonna describe for you how the four day work week might really play into your hands. The UK is joining the US, Ireland, Canada, Australia, and New Zealand in a pilot to see just what's possible when it comes to organizations offering their workforces a four-day week. However, it's not as straightforward as it seems and it's not necessarily the be-all and end-all in terms of creating the lives that we want. But stick around and I'm going to show you how you can make it absolutely perfect for you. So, Four Day Week Global has teamed up with Cambridge and Oxford Universities and Boston College to put together a trial with about 30 organizations across the UK of four day working. I love it. You have to work less hours, but you get the same amount of money. What's not to like? Well, dig a little deeper and you start to see it's maybe not as brilliant as it sounds. Still not bad though. You have to work 36 hours to get the pay of five days. So if you think about it, most contracts are either 38 and a half or 40 hours a week. So 36 is not a massive reduction, but it's enough for people to say it's a four day work week. And essentially what they're saying is it's all about focusing on productivity. So they want 100% productivity out of you across those 36 hours and they'll pay you a full working week wage. That wasn't easy to say, a full working week wage. <laughs> there you go. Uh, all these tongue twisters I keep putting in the script for myself. Anyway, this focus on productivity does raise some challenges. It's quite difficult to measure productivity when you're just working a normal routine job week in and week out. And some jobs, of course, are not about volumes of stuff. It's about thinking time. So measuring productivity, not the most straightforward. However, the increase in remote working over the last few years has meant that more and more managers are getting used to the idea of measuring outcomes rather than inputs. So the good news is a focus on productivity will require better clarity between workers and their managers. And that can only be a good thing. So I thought about this and I think I've come up with about five ways that you can really make this work for you. So if your company decides to offer this out to you outside of the pilot that's going on, here's some things to think about. The first is to be absolutely clear on the objectives between you and your manager. What are you supposed to do? What are the tasks that you have to achieve this week? What are the results they're looking for? The second is to be proactive when it comes to communication. Establish some norms when it comes to communication. Reach out to your manager frequently. Don't wait for them to just talk to you. What you're trying to achieve is a level of assurance where they feel confident that you've got the deliverables in mind and you're on track. The third one is to resist meeting at all costs. Now there are some meetings that are absolutely essential but there are an awful lot more that are a complete waste of your time. And if you're going to be productive you want to avoid anything that's going to suck the life out of you and ensure that you just get further and further behind. But the fourth one is probably the biggest opportunity for you if you're thinking about proposing something like a four day week and that is create your own schedule. Now there will be things that are set pieces through the week that you and your team need to do together but beyond that, you decide when you're going to work. That's the whole point of this. If you're only focused on the outcomes, the things that you've got to deliver, it means you don't have to worry so much about the time that you start work, the time that you finish, the specific breaks that you take. As long as you can get the work done, then create your own schedule. Start to fashion the life that you really want. The next one is more about mindset and it's more about seek responsibilities. It's very easy when we've got remote working put in place or we're remote from our manager and the rest of our team. It's very easy to fall into routines that essentially mean you're just doing what gets presented to you. The mindset of a change maker is the person who wants to go the extra mile, the person who wants to take on extra responsibility because they know it will help them. It will also help the people around them. So seek out those extra responsibilities. So what options do you have? Let me know in the comments. Let's open up the conversation about what's out there in the marketplace right now. What sort of things are employers starting to offer? These are really challenging times and I'm curious as to what you've been offered so far. Share it and let's have a chat. But before you go, make sure you like and subscribe to the channel. That ensures this message gets out to more people. And if you want to know a little bit more about Build Back Better and how you can start to create the life that you want, check out the video that's being recommended to you as this video ends. And I'll see you next week.